So unless you've been living under a rock or, you know, we're all in kind of the IT CIO world, Gen AI is everywhere. And, you know, like Arslan and like you, I talk to leaders all over the world. I have the joy of running our Gen AI go to market at Databricks. I came over via the Mosaic ML acquisition almost a year and a half ago. So I've spoken to hundreds, thousands of customers over the last almost year and a half. And everybody's experimenting with Gen AI. So a great example that our salon actually just went through that's interesting is the Unity catalog. When he showed that table and described like, I don't actually know what any of those tables or those columns mean. It's hard for lay people or people that don't know that table to understand that data. So how do you start to utilize LLMs or utilize this Gen AI to be able to go after and understand that? But we found, and I'll get into details on all this, is our customers do not want to have that data sent to a third-party proprietary model provider because of sensitivities to the data, because of security, because of a whole host of reasons. You know, the, the middle one here, competitive advantage. How do you make sure that that data is unique to you? So in that Unity Catalog example, where again, he wrote the, the table description at the top, something like one to 2% of Unity Catalog tables actually had the description and then had those column names. And as a result of that, he did the query you wouldn't have been able to see those, I think the supply chain, like home goods outputs, because that's not what those columns were called. But LLMs as part of the data intelligence platform is very good at describing what these are. So why I'm telling this story is every organization that I talk to has started with, you know, an open AI or a Claude or one of the other large models, and they're getting pretty good results. So in the union catalog example, we started with open AI, like every 